show. And we, I, the, we do a lot of like allowing the callers to call in and um, they didn't ask a lot of questions about um, what is ahead for us or, you know, what is it all about? And I, um, or I just wonder, like, um, when we think about the economy, you know, what, what do you worry about? Um, do you worry? Do you, do you think about it? How, what type of impact do you think con Congress has on the economy? What type of impact do you think that the um, president and vice president have on the economy? Thank you for sharing your Wednesday evening with me. This is recorded live, <laughs> all the way live on October 7th, 2020. This is it. We're talking about the economy. We're talking about the election. We're talking about whatever's on your mind. We are about to tonight. We are about to have this is, yeah, this is the first time we're going to have a vice presidential debate where, um, well, I guess it's not, it's not the first time that a woman was on the vice presidential debate, but it's the, um, I don't know if I could say black woman, that's where I guess everybody's saying a woman of color, a woman of color is on the, um, is running for um, vice president and is um, on the ticket. If something happens, you know, we, um, to the president, then we'll, um, this woman of color that's gonna be debating tonight will be the first woman of color. Do you, um, and I know uh, there is a difference. Do you all think that there's a difference? I think, you know, I know there's a difference. I know that I'm a black woman. I'm a descendant of slaves. Um, she is a woman of color because she has um, parents from different nationalities. So the, um, you know, to, to acknowledge that, it should be acknowledged. We should acknowledge, and I, I am extremely proud to be a black woman, you know, and um, wouldn't it be something if I found out that I, I was not um, a black woman? <laughs> you know, be like, like what? It'd be like some sort of scandal, because it, it wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't find out. I wouldn't find out till I'm like way famous or something, you know. And they find out that my dad was not. You know, I had no slaves in my lineage. No, but I know for a fact I'm from North Carolina. I'm not. You know, there's only accents in my family are um, Southern accents. <laughs> My daddy would be like, you, you, my mom too. They would go, girl, you are black. I'm opening up these microphones, but I need y'all to help me. I need y'all to help me and make sure that you mute, okay? So when you're not talking, mute. But I definitely love to hear your laugh. I love to hear your laugh. I love to hear your amen. I love to hear your no. I love to hear your yes. I love to hear your yes more than your no. <laughs> But I got some I got some questions for you. Now let's talk about the US economy because a lot of times when we hear about the economy, it's just a couple of lines through a, a news story. Would you agree? Yes. And this is ah, just, you know, the economy is bad or the economy is good, or um, but I want to ask you first, do you know what the most important component of the US economy is? Do you know what the most important component when they talk about the U.S. economy and um, what is the most, what is, what is accepted as the most important part of the U.S. economy? Workers, right? Or employees? Nope. President. Nope. <laughs> what did you say? Yeah. That's close. Who said, what did somebody say? Um, I'm somebody thinking said, supply. I'm thinking supply and the president. Man. The president. <laughs> nope. Uh, aren't we lucky? No. No. But somebody, I thought somebody said credit. I said supply and demand, not credit. Uh, it is definitely um, that comes in there because the most important part of the economy is consumer spending. 
Mm-hmm. So where does what where does credit come in there, right? The that if if they can make it easier for you to borrow money, then you start helping the economy. Almost had it. If they can make it easier for you to get to your retirement account, like they're doing this year, it can do what? Make you spin it. Help the economy. They said, let's let these young people get to their savings without a penalty. And they're going after it. Be very careful, y'all. Very hard to get a lump sum of money again. Is there anybody else that can relate to that? Yeah. It can take you 20 years to accumulate, you know, $100,000. You know, it, yeah. it, there's probably some people were doing, you know, $10 or $20 a pay period. They got to $100,000 and then you get this notice and it says you can take that $100,000 out without penalty because you're 53 years old and you're 59 supposed- and a half. Huh? 59 and a half. No. Who was that? Gwen, TSP. You're so wrong. You're so wrong. <laughs> this year, the 59 and a half rule doesn't exist for the penalty. Look, so now that's what happens. People are taking the money out because for COVID, you are allowed to take it out. But Ms. Williams is correct that generally the rule is what? 59 and a half. 59 and and a older. Half. But this year, it's what? 53. Any age. Right now. Any age. Any age. Right now. So I said 53 because I was just saying that it could be a 40-year-old who's going in right now. And But why would the government do that? Mm. Why would they they do that? So, So they won't. So they won't have to give you money in unemployment. They're trying to give you, make money available to you any kind of way they can. So you'll do to what? Keep you, to keep you stimulate the economy. Stimulate the economy. That's right. And That's so that we can keep the U.S. economy flowing. Mm-hmm. That's right. Because the most important part of it is you spending. And who's more likely to spend? A person yeah. under 59 and a half with three kids or a person in their 80s whose kids are grown. Who's going to spend? <laughs> the young one. That's right. So if they want to help the economy, you know, they said, so they said to the older people, you can wait. You don't even have to take a required minimum distribution this year. You can chill on that because we're going to make enough money off these young people. So you don't have to take, isn't that something? So they say, you don't have to take this out. But to the young people, I know y'all got issues. <laughs> We're going to let you take yours out. I feel, I find that to be amazing. The understanding that they have of our psyche, our psyche and, 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 and our personal states that they, you know, could make a decision just like that because they're constantly ha- getting information on us, the census and everything. They know more and more about you. So the most important part of the economy is consumer spending, followed by business spending, then government spending, and then net exports. So what do you think net exports are? And I remember I used to have to do this in school all the time. We always have us projecting what we thought that the gross domestic product, the GDP, when you hear that, the gross domestic product is the consumer spending, business spending, government spending, and net exports. That's everything, everything, you know, all put together and then netting out the exports, meaning what you're bringing in, you know, and what your your imports are what we're bringing in and our exports are what we're sending out. So Mm -hmm. which ones help the economy? What helps the economy? Exports. Yeah, exactly. What you sell to another country? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we want to have a positive net exports. So we want to have more going out than coming in. So Mm -hmm. so that's why it says net, like net worth. Your net worth is your assets minus your liabilities. But too often, all we look at are, are is the asset part. 
and you're not realizing that your liabilities can easily outpace your assets if your assets don't grow. So if we go into a recession, a person can easily become bankrupt, meaning the assets are worth less or worth less than what you owe on them. So what is the largest economy in the world now? Dubai? No. Nope. China? I said China. The U.S., the United States is no longer the world's largest. It is indeed what you said, China. China? Okay. Yes. Who, who is it? Crystal said Dubai. They <laughs> <laughs> have all the money. Have you been there? No. Because oh, the way it looks like, it would look like it does have all the money in the world, right? <laughs> yeah. But I would love to find out like, um, like if Dubai is like broke, wouldn't that be something you find out? Because you know, a lot of times you see people and they have a lot of stuff <laughs> and then they're negative. Like Dubai might be owned by China. <laughs> if you like, they have all this money that they owe to China. Isn't that, wouldn't that be something? I mean, and it's very possible it because is. China is outpacing everybody. Right. China's everywhere. It's in China's in Africa. Yes. And um, yep. China, we owe they so much in everything. China. That's why when you go to the store now, oh, wow. the stores have not been restocked. Mm. You know, there's mm -hmm. still a lot of empty shelves in these grocery stores. In our stores? Yes. Oh, in our yes. stores. Walmart, yeah. all of them. Are. Really? Yeah, oh, yeah. because we're not doing trade. Which is that export right. import, right? Yeah. So we're not trading as much with China. Look, I'm not buying nothing. You, you, you good though, Miss Howard. You go out there shopping and stuff. Now, I, I don't shop. I, I just like to be out. Good for so, you. I just noticed that stuff. Well, you good. I'm glad. I'm glad somebody got to do it because I would have never noticed. Next time, send me pictures. Say, look at this, JB. Please, please send me I pictures. Will. There's just a lot of empty. Um, I mean, stores that are not restocking because everything comes from China. Exactly. That, that's in the United States. So we're, um, my, my biggest fear is that we will have another 2008 and we will lose money. Um, the collapse of the economy, you know, and all our stocks and bonds and, um, you know, money that you have saved that it will just, go down. The government would just take it away. Well, the government didn't take it away last time. No. And they can't ever take it away. You know, no. they can't, I mean, I, you know, it's stupid for me to say they can't ever when they took, you know, all the land from Indians and everything. So <laughs> I, but, but we really cannot say they wouldn't That's take it true. away, but let's, let's hope not. Right. But the, JB, yes. that, in my thought process, that's why when people do take their money out of their 401, at least they are getting it. Getting oh, you're it. bad. I know I'm bad, and I know we disagree about that, but <laughs> I do, I, you know, I'm thinking instead, you know, because just like... Um, well, if they did, then please just keep it, because they mm -hmm. give you three years before you got to put it back. Exactly, so, I mean... I don't have any problem with them taking it back out. But what happens is they take it out and spend it, then owe tax money too. Right. Now that's the problem. So like, so if they say, oh, this, you know, this, they're going to take it. So let me, let me put it over here because, you know, you don't think that it's the end of the world. You just think that my money is threatened. Well, then yeah. you take it, but you got to, you know, you have to make sure you have that money available because if you live and we all live, the government's coming to get that money, you know, said their part. They're coming to get any income taxes owed and they will keep it. But what I found out this week is that I did not know that your income tax balance after 10 years can, but you got to be careful with the small print, can actually be taken off. Did you know that? Um, I feel like a friend of mine at work does not pay income tax after a certain amount of income is reached and taxes have been paid. Mm. Yeah. I don't know what, but the, but if you have a tax balance, you know, that after the 10th year, 
it's taken. But this is the this was the kicker though. If they deem you not able to pay it back, they could extend the years on that. Oh, you mean like owing? Yeah. If you oh. owe it, if you owe taxes. So if you have like from 2010 that you owe twenty thousand dollars and you've oh. been making payments on it, you know, you might want to talk to them about when is that balance going to fall off. Gotcha. Okay. That's a different story. Yeah. That, that, like, that, I, I, I am been, I'm sorry. Interest, do they still uh, charge you interest on that? All of it will go if you get to that 10 year period, but the whole time okay. they're charging you interest and penalties. That's good. Okay. But that is like weird to me, but <laughs> if, but if they, which was in a situation, it should have been gone. But they said that they were deemed unable to pay it back because mm -hmm. they didn't have the money, which makes sense. So that would be almost everybody. Because if you don't, the, the IRS can literally like put liens on stuff and things like right. that. It's very That's hard to get to 10 years yeah. without them taking it. Because like if you sell your house, they're going to get their money that way. If they sell your property, you know, so it's like, but... At least I had thought that it followed you through death like school loans. So how can the IRS be more lenient than school loans? Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. And if you set up a payment, if you set up a repayment plan on school loans, and I'm not going to go on that, but just throw this out there, and you don't keep that arrangement, they won't let you do another arrangement. Amen. That wow. is crazy. That is true. Don't I know? So the school <laughs> loans are worse than taxation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That has to be addressed. How many people got to go through Congress and go up there and get paid and get benefits and everything and not do anything for consumers? Right. When the consumers rule the economy. Yeah. They're the most important part. So if you say you're going to put in print that consumers are the most important part, but we don't have any consumer protection. You got all these kids coming out of school right. in a pandemic, you know, and they can't pay. They don't even have a job. They can't pay their school loans back. Parents, be conscious of that. Be conscious of that. So then um, supply and demand, another, as Ms. Hayes mentioned, is, um, is a part of the economy because as um, when you think about how, how much supply of something that we have, it's about... Um, how many people do you have available to come to work? How many, how much natural resources do we have? Like oil, um, land, water, you know, um, and then, uh, you know, and what is the demand? Um, Cause like right now, oil prices are down because people aren't driving as much. They're not traveling as much. So the demand for it goes down. So that's going to bring down, you know, th that part of the economy because it's going to bring down the price and it's going to impact, you know, and people are not spending on that um, portion. So sometimes you'll see where, you know, the, um, it, it will, it will, oil prices will be down. And I saw this was like maybe about five years back and they didn't give a raise. It was the, the Obama administration and they didn't give a raise to social security. And they said, because, you know, the um, inflation rate, you know, as is so it's you know, consumer, um, the CPI is so low, which is inflation that they, and the reason that it was, was because gas prices were down at that particular time when the numbers were done. But I was like, seniors aren't doing a whole lot of driving and using gas, but they are doing a lot of medical. And so pro gas prices had gone down so far down but the but healthcare had gone up so much higher that I was like, you should have a separate uh, inflation for seniors because what they're spending their money on is different than just the general population. But they were not given a raise because they were saying inflation is so low, and that's you know that's going to happen again, you know, with us being in a recession because we have you know, so many millions of people being unemployed. And even before COVID, we had almost 40 million people, according to the census, that over, over that's a third of Americans are either poor or near poor. 
Right. And I just read something about that, uh, that um, poverty, the main um, reason for poverty is um, medical bills. Wow. wow. Um, you know, people not using credit to pay medical for their medication mm, mm, and medical mm. bills. That's terrible. That was like now? Yes. And these are pre-COVID numbers. So now, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And Can I think the scary is that right somebody, now, the, the numbers are increasing. Mm. The unemployment uh, with airlines, um, they mm. were talking about that in the news today about the airlines yes. and all of the people that are going uh, just unemployed, just don't have income coming in because I mean, all the know. airlines have run out of money. That's what I was about to off. say. The government is going to help them, you know, the airlines, mm -hmm. you know, right. which I don't understand that because when we live, if, if we're going to be about capitalism, then in capitalism, some companies are going to go under. Right. And they're going to go under because some companies are going to be highly leveraged, meaning they owe a lot of people and there'll be some companies that don't and they'll buy. They can buy the other company in times like this. Why does the government feel that they have to do everything if we're going to be capitalism? So but if we're not going to be a capitalist economy, then let's help the people that need help and get public health care for everybody. Well, so I don't understand how point. we can provide public support to corporations, but not public support to every person. We've got to stop this. We've got to stop it somehow, like, and get that communicated that you can't just use it because you want to help Wall Street, you know, but then you have people over here who need to have more money put on their EBT card because mm -hmm. the kids are home all day. You know, That's right. and they, they can't, they don't have enough money to feed them. Mm -hmm. One yeah. thing about it, there is no light at the end of the tunnel because it seems like this is the way we'll be living next year as well. Who so does? we started the beginning of this year. We're going to be going into 2021 in the same condition, but a little bit worse. <laughs> and this is like, and I want to share here, I'm glad that you mentioned that, on how we're going to get through this. Because someone mentioned like 2008, 2009, you know, at that particular time in 2007, 2008, 2009, as a financial advisor, were very hard years. But um, there are a lot of people who, I think Ms. Neville was saying, that those years didn't stand out to her as hard. <laughs> she was like, I bought my house during that time. I did all these different things, you know, at that time. But we went through, I mean, that is the great recession. Oh, I remember it well. But because you, um, if you work for the, um, a government entity, you know, it did not impact you the way it did people in corporate environments. You no, know, so the government may not have gotten like as many raises, you know, but the, um, you know, definitely uh, in the corporate environment where it started shifting from you're all of a sudden you have to, to, in order to get your pay up, you have to go and get a bonus. You have to have certain production. You have to have, you know, um, no safety um, has to be perfect in order for, you know, your group or your team, you know, to get that pay raise and things, everything started um, because it was so much harder to build to, for the company to be profitable and interest rates were even higher than, so businesses, it wasn't easy for businesses to get money where now at least interest rates are low, you know, so businesses are able to get money. No, but um, one, one, some things, some key things for us and for us like re, to protect ourselves, like what I would do differently from then. That is when I realized that debt is not the answer. And that to, I would say at 2007, um, yeah, it was around my daughter was like starting kindergarten, first grade, you know, I realized that having payment way of life living off payments and having debt 
especially as an entrepreneur, is not what you can do. So, and I remember taking um, the last, I had several sedan Mercedes back then. I mean, the last one I bought, beautiful, you know, S-Class, you know, S500, nice, floated down the street and everything. And I remember taking them to a car dealership <laughs> and asking them how much money would they give me for it, you know? And they, I, they were like 20,000 upside down, 20,000 upside down. And I, my, my daughter, you know, she, you know, she's like, what? She was like six or whatever. And I was laughing and she said, mom, what's so funny? I said, no, oh, baby, I'll tell you later. <laughs> I was like, cause she was like, she knew that the man hadn't said something nice to me, but I still was laughing about it. But I just thought this is ridiculous the money we lose on these things, you know? And I just had to take it home for me. I just had to take it home. <laughs> I was like, I get, you can't get out. You can't get out. <laughs> but I promised myself when I got out of that debt, cause like, you know, like when you're a financial advisor, you can't file bankruptcy. You can't, you know what I mean? There is no get out of jail free card. You have to take the pain. And I said, I am going to sell, sell this stuff. My parents thought I was crazy. But I said, dear God, I remember having a prayer. And I said, dear Lord, please let me know what I'm made of. I said, because God, I'm getting rid of all of this. If that means that people won't see me the same way, if that means that I won't look rich no more, I don't care. Dear God, I don't want to wake up every day stressing out. You know, yeah. and we live in this world that like likes you know, they, they, you know, you like to ha see professionals that have all this stuff, you know, and then mm -hmm. we don't relate to when they end up going to jail or breaking the law or, you know what I'm saying? You cannot survive as an entrepreneur, you know, with that or that amount of debt and think that your credit's going to be protected. You know, you can buy stuff and that's what, that's what my philosophy switched to. I'm going to buy if I want it, I'm gonna buy it. If I can't afford it, I won't have, I'll have to wait. And that's what I've been doing with my daughter, teaching her that we put this over here. You got delayed gratification. We skip, you know, so much of that. So a key mm -hmm. point is for us, for our survival, I must make sure that I make this point, is that we have to pay down debt. There's no way that I would have the um, peace of mine that I have now with my daughter entering college, you know, <laughs> during a pandemic, you know, is that it's because of paying down debt and living way below my means. And having, you know, the, you, the emergency fund, the, the thing about the emergency funds are that they just get spent, but you still got to have it. You still got to have it. If you don't have the emergency fund, you got to have that card that has the available balance. You can't just have credit cards. If you have them, they have to be your access to money. Am I making sense? Yes. They yes. have to be available to you. They're no good to you if there's money on them. Yeah. Mm. Yep. And identify ways that you can cut back. Like, okay, if you're right, is Ms. House right? If the, if the head of the Federal Reserve is right, he said that this is going to get bad if the government doesn't come out and help. Now, now how exactly would it really change <laughs> everybody's life dr so dramatically if they come out with another thousand dollars? I mean, I just don't see it. We got 40, we have 40 million, 40 million people already poor and living on poverty and you've given them a thousand dollars and you want even another thousand dollars, and that's going to change the way the you know way when we have a lot more than forty million now. But what know. happened is people abused it. The ones that mm. didn't need it got the money, oh, and the people Jesus. that really needed it didn't get it. That's oh. terrible. But that that's still terrible. that's still kicking the can down the street instead mm. of really yeah. dealing with um, the bigger issue. But JB, you mentioned about. You know, when will the government stop bailing out? 
if it's, we're in this capitalist society. And, you know, it's so hard because you've got people, human working. beings right. going, help, help. You're and right. so then President Obama bails out GMAC. And yeah. so now you got the same situation. You got people yeah. screaming, I'm going to lose my job, you know, and That's all right. of the tentacles that flow from GMAC, exactly. just like the same with the airlines and the airports are empty and no food exactly. service. And so, I, but they should, when they do that, they should own it. Yeah, I, I hear you on that, you but know what I'm saying? Cause is it possible though? Is it is it possible for an airline to really have enough cash on hand? I mean, mm -hmm. do they? You know, and and I'm just asking the question to anyone because I, right? I don't know, That's and right. I just I just feel like I do wonder sometimes um, why aren't they able to sustain to themselves? Hold, yeah, because the truth of the matter is, like, they're not doing anything if you don't have anybody on it you cut back just like the rest of us right you know so you make the adjustment the person goes on unemployment you know and we have an unemployment system but and then you know your business so you have more jets on the ground you're not spending as much money and you and they can't the fill them to capacity anymore yep you don't have to you just can't fill it to capacity anymore you know and you keep moving well some of them will be able to manage that, whatever the criteria right. is, effectively. That's capitalism. If right. we look back to the beginning of time, even in the Garden of Eden, there were issues. There's <laughs> always, you know what I'm saying? There's one thing that we can always know is that there's always going to be issues. Mm -hmm. And there's no way that the government can clean up, you know what I mean? Mess. It's only mm -hmm. for those who are big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And forget about all the issues for those of us who are small. We're going through issues too. I assume they think because it is capitalist society that if we keep the corporations going, then you little people, you'll have your jobs. Mm -hmm. and it, but that's and not I mean, what the government to do. That's not what capitalism is based on. Yeah, I it's get it. Only the strong survive. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then the other company gets to buy you up. Then the people go work for the other company. Mm -hmm. Monopoly. Yeah, that's, you know, but then we say, oh, well, no, monopoly is wrong. Well, then, you know, it's, we don't really have capitalism. Yeah. You know, we, we really don't. And the, what, what do we have then? What would you, how would you classify it? I have seen it written that it's called a mixed economy. Okay, but I'm like mixed with what they don't want to say what it's mixed with, but it's I guess it's mixed, <laughs> but it's kind of mixed with socialism, you know, and um, which, capitalism, which is, which is communism. Oh, yep, really? Yes, people. I, don't need know. To... I ain't say it. Don't be bringing me. Before I, Congress. I'm saying it. I'm saying it because <laughs> that's Miss Perkins. That's it's Ms. gonna. Perkins. It's Perkins. gonna end up being. Um, the haves and the have-nots. Mm. Yeah, I mean, and we have that now. I thought like, that was yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, that's mm -hmm. already in existence. Yes, yes. I mean, it, it is, it's just blatantly true. And the, um, and there's nothing that the government, you know, can really, you know, if, in a capitalist economy, the government's not supposed to get involved with that. Mm -hmm. But if, but if it, you know, what we're supposed to do is somehow all become entrepreneurs and benefit from the capitalist economy. That's what it's supposed to be like, that we all have freedom and freedom of ideas and freedom to go out there, you know, that it's not supposed to like stop, you know, a, a business from being able to take over another business and things like that actually are going on because they're saving them. And then like when they did the buyout, they forced all the banks to take the loans, to yeah. take the debt, to take the payment. They had to all take a certain amount, you know, and then they could give it back. Um, and then most of them like paid it back immediately. But like, I mean, that's like s straight up favoritism. Do you know how many small businesses went out of business? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, nobody helped us. And now JB, you know, it's mm -hmm. interesting. We are talking, you know, semi gloom and doom. Um, but I got an email from LinkedIn and they revealed 50 of the most prosperous startups. And interesting enough, all 50 of them live right there in technology. 
And mm. these are companies that exactly. were pretty much born and have gotten their second win from COVID. Yes. And I mean, and look, and they probably, big time money. Look, and they probably paid LinkedIn for being for their exposure. And they're probably look, so. Look, but it worked. But it worked because you it read is, the article. But, yeah. it's, but it's true technology, which we've been talking about, what? For at Forever. least three years on yeah. Afroeconomics. Yep, yep. That I've always said that I believe that technology is the future, that I focus technology in my portfolios. Does yep. not always have said it. And it's I, all over the place. You yep. know, it just is. Yep. And we have been doing it. We have been doing it. But the, um, but it's also like, no matter how good your idea is, I'm at a disadvantage because I don't have the money. I don't have, you know, a million dollars. You know what I mean? I don't have um, Shark Tank investors. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> here's, here's this money. You know, your portfolios are great. You know, let me, you become world known. You know, it's, you know, that um, it's not that. And then plus, if that did happen, I probably, you know, they would, they would want some ownership and I wouldn't give it up anyway. So, right. but it's, you know, but that is, you know, the way capitalism is, you, you're just supposed to work your business and work your business and work your business. And, you know, some one day, someone in a different, a power, more powerful position may recognize what you're doing and want to be an investor in it, you know, or you'll focus on your market, work it effectively, you know, and, and just build, build and provide the service for as long as you can, for as well as you can. Mm-hmm. And, but that, you know, but that is the challenge of, you know, business in general, but you don't, I don't wake up and think like big business has the leisure of doing, you know, will the government, you know, help us out again? Will they give us the money again? You know, I don't, mm. but what if the stock market, let's think about that from a recession perspective, which someone um, brought up that if the stock market goes down, like it did in March, it went down 30%. You know, and there were some people then who I advised against it, but they sold everything they had in the stock market. I mean, they really felt that it was the end of the world and it was nothing that I could do, you know what I mean, to stop them. Because it just kept doing it day after day after day. But isn't that funny how it, we don't even remember it now? I know it, right? <laughs> isn't that? And it was this year. Oh, it's this year. What did the market close at today, JD? It's up. Dow did well today. Okay. It was like over um over five hundred points up. Okay. Yeah, I can tell you exactly. Twenty eight three oh three up five hundred and thirty points. Wow. Yeah. So that's that's the Dow. That's only thirty. That's an indicator. That doesn't mean that you made a lot of money today. But wow. but we're moving. You know. Um, moving moving positive again I, I saw um um one of the talking heads on television he was saying that the market started recovering after um they found out that trump was healthy and that's yeah. something <laughs> it said that it um i you know and i you know it's hard to admit but that kind of tells you something about the um election also yeah but I, the um we're going to see as long as the, the market stays like that, you know, and that's probably what it is. no matter how sick he was, he probably was like, let me crawl myself out of here. I'm going. So they, they might've had a stick in his back, whatever it was. He was like, I got to get out of here. I got to save this market. Isn't that something? And the, the market is just so emotional. That's yes. why you have to make, we ha- you have to, you know, allow me to do that risk tolerance analysis. And the risk tolerance analysis says, if the market goes down like this, can you stomach it? You know, and we have to be true to it. If you're conservative and you can't take volatility, you know, I've already asked you that. But other than that, um, you know, if I have you in a portfolio, even if it's your allocation at work that I set up, you know, it was according to your risk tolerance and we are, you know, I'm committed to making sure you upgrade, you update that at least every six months. So it's real how you manage what you have so that you can get through times like this. 
I mean, the, the investor who has a partnership, who is with, you know, um, you know, with someone they feel that they trust and feels good, I believe that I could find some evidence that will say that um, a person who does have a good advisor with them goes, who survives better through bad market times. I've seen it, it's been a minute, you know, but you know, we can always find research to back anything you say. <laughs> At least you sleep better, I think, <laughs> when, you have, when you have your team together. But isn't it true? No matter what you say, you research long enough, find somebody like Ms. Hayes, she can research, she can find it. Oh yes, right here. Yep, here it is. <laughs> yep. yeah, JB, yeah. Uh -huh. if you if you are um, <laughs> ten years or 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 less before retirement, regardless of whether the person is um, a risk taker, would you advise them to be a little bit more on the conservative side? Oh no. I would say if it was five years or less, okay. then they hardly have something, you know, to be, to be concerned about. Okay, good. But it's highly unlikely that there, there, I, I don't, there's not, there hasn't been many 10 year periods where a negative didn't come back to a positive, you know what okay. I mean? Within a 10 year period, if we use the S and P 500. Okay. For an example. That's like, good. That's yeah, good. Yeah, ex yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Because it is a good question. <laughs> but see, it is but we probably question. but but the smaller we make that time period, the more you know, the less time you're giving yourself to recover. Yeah. Like we will find a lot more five year periods over the last hundred years where the market was stayed negative. Mm -hmm. But when you say ten years, you know what I'm saying? It's you're gonna find less periods of time where it stayed negative for a ten year period. If Got any. you. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm, that's all we can base it on because the past is no indication of, you know, no guarantee of the future. Exactly. But if we're using that, um, that if you have, you know, the longer the period of time you have, the, mm -hmm. the more you can benefit. You can even benefit from mm -hmm. a recession. Yeah. No, and if, if you're worried about your job, you know, let's focus on continuing our education and, and working on our skills. And if we think, you know, that, oh, um, technology is where it's going to be, make sure that you, you know, study something that um, even if it's just a certificate program, you know, that and don't feel like you can't afford things. If, if you can get approved, if you need the skill and you get you will get approved for a loan for it and the loan won't be due until it's over, you know, and you feel like this is going to take you to the next level. You've got to do it. You've got to do it. You talking about me. I'm talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to do it. It's only the beginning. I'm you know, a, I, there, I'm there are days, believe it or not, where I'll, I'll, I think, you know, I go, I really don't want to do that, but I'm going to have to do that. I'm going to have to, you know, I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to do that. I'm going to have to spend that money. I'm going to have to make that investment in that move for the business because I have to always be moving forward. And if you're not doing something that's scaring you a little for your betterment, then you're not doing the right thing. Like, don't be comfortable. I used in my class the other night, um, we were talking about how businesses can get into habits and that they'll just keep doing the same thing over and over and just because that's how they've always done it. And I said, that reminds me of the fable of the frog, where if, if you drop a frog into a boiling pot of water, the frog will jump out. But if you put the frog in the water and you slowly heat it up, he'll just sit there and die, just sit there and get cooked. And see, that's what I don't want us to do with these little checks that they're sending and the little, you know, unemployment they might be sending out, you know, and little things to help them let you take your money and spend your money, you know, and hey, you don't have to worry about it for three years and all of this. <clears throat> don't believe the hype. Yeah. That's the, that's the pot just heating up, heating up. So they can eat it. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. if, so if it is comfortable, if it's easy, don't trust it. Mm. 
what if I was drinking alcohol? I'm just, but when you <laughs> be like, I never look, I do the rest of it. <laughs> You'll be like, I want to see what she got. A great big cup, great big cup. We'll never know. You'll <laughs> never <right>. know. <laughs> but, but I know, look, Mike told me, he was like, you need to put your logo or something on that cup. Because I'll be like, using my cup. I've been so thirsty. I started doing more keto. And for some reason, it's made me more thirsty than ever. And I don't know why, which just means that I haven't been eating my carbs. And you would think that I would have been thirstier when you're eating more carbs, when you have more starches. But I haven't had a starch for a minute. So nobody need to walk past me with a piece of bread because I might attack you. <laughs> like, I, saw some, I saw some muffins downstairs. I'm like, oh my goodness. Yeah. Nobody should have anything like that around me for, <laughs> for a few more weeks. But I have lost the craving, which is a blessing. Yeah. But slowly but surely, talking about that frog, that during COVID, I was just slowly going back into bad habits and I just had to stop it. No, it was like, no, that's whatever it is. If you find yourself like not moving as much, not getting up, not getting air, not getting light, not getting conversations in, not, you know, not talking to me like you used to, not coming to your appointments, not, you know, not showing up for stuff, not, you know, that whatever it is, if you don't get too comfortable. Because if we're about to go through hell, you want to be your healthiest. That's you right. want to come out on fire, <laughs> not dead. You want to be blazing. That's the way I want to see. I want, you know, I promised myself there's this, this book called Peaks and Valleys. And there's always going to be peaks and valleys. Mm -hmm. But if when you're in the valley, if you're building yourself up, and you're making yourself stronger and wiser and making investments. And the best investment is you making sure you're good, investing in you, and you're making these wise choices. Then when you go in a valley again, it won't be as serious. You know, whatever they got for us coming, because we prepped, we got our savings right, we're getting the debt down, right? Yep. You're not trying to impress anybody. You're living well below your means. You're getting your skills. You got your stuff or you already got a good job. Whatever it is, like you're, you're good. Save more. Save more. Don't spend more. Save more. Did you know that Amazon takes EBT cards? Oh, wow. Did y'all know that? I know. None of us saw no. <laughs> I know. I was, I was watching a video about um, food deserts. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. And um, CNBC did a great story on that about food deserts. And of course, you know, they're in our, in our community. But the interesting thing is that they had several experts who said that even when they bring the stores to our communities, we still won't eat healthy food. No. That's well, so part of that, JB, is because, for example, the Church Hill store, when they opened up that grocery store in Church Hill, mm. um, people weren't patronizing it because they couldn't get, you know, the 10 for a dollar like they could at yeah, Walmart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and there was an article in, yeah. about that. Yeah. They're too expensive yeah. in, our, in our neighborhood. Yeah. And then they, they went over that. They did address that too because they were saying it's harder to make a profit in the city. Right. Because the insurance is higher. You know, the expenses of being right. there are yeah. so much mm -hmm. higher. Isn't that something? Yeah. But you would think that they are getting, they, well, they, they are because the government gives those stores in the food deserts government funding. Yes. Mm. So they really shouldn't be charging like that. Yeah. And grocery stores really don't make a lot of profit. I didn't know that. Oh, they don't? Yeah, they said they make about 1%, like Kroger. Kroger was saying, like, they were losing money in all their stores that they had to close out some um, stores, some stores that were in Black neighborhoods, and they were saying Walmart wouldn't, like, make a rebuttal or say why they closed their stores, you know? <laughs> it was like, because Walmart did it, too. Like, all these places, like, just left, you know, neighborhoods where food deserts were, and they were there, mm -hmm. and then they just left all of a sudden, but Kroger was saying it's just, they were losing 
negative because of their, you know, profit is so tight because of those 10 for 10. They and probably stuff. had a lot of theft too. They didn't want to admit that. Yeah. I'm so glad they didn't say it. I'm so glad they didn't say it. But yeah, yeah I was thinking that too. That's really sad. But then that makes the insurance costs go up. Right. And that's a problem. Yep. You know, not making money, the insurance, the rent, everything, and then people stealing. Yep. So I feel that if we can, you know, um, that I don't know if everybody knows that, but but then you might have the problem of you order from Amazon, but they won't deliver into your neighborhood because they don't deliver everywhere. So if, if the lady is trying to get, you know, her formula for the baby, you know, and get it delivered and she needs it, you know, whatever, like, will they still, you know, deliver it? No, or, but they do, they are pretty good about having like certain pickup places. Mm. Maybe they have yes. pickup places, but I was impressed that um, they had set up a, a relationship with the government so that people could buy the approved items, you know, on um, mm -hmm. the Amazon mm -hmm. website. Because yeah. that, that is my I have ordered store. some small, a small item from Amazon and, um, instead of delivering it to the home, they have lockers yeah. at a supermarket. It's so like, you, mm -hmm. Yeah, you just get, they'll give you the locker number and you just pin it, put it in and it opens up and you get your package. Where was your locker? It was at a, um, a grocery store called Giant Eagle in Pittsburgh. Okay. So you had that, like, that wouldn't, I wonder where they would put it in a neighborhood. But that, know, yeah. This um, where they put it, it is that um, they have like two, like a market district, which is pr pretty much high end. Okay. So yeah. that is where the locker well, they is. Said that, <laughs> they said that everywhere there's a Trader Joe's and a Whole Food, the value of the real estate increases dramatically. Yeah, and this this giant eagle is down the street from a Whole Food, and mm -hmm. in that trip, so you can yeah. like like I live next near. I can walk to Trader Joe's or Whole Foods, and um, the um a Kroger. I can walk a Walmart, a Target. Oh, I mean seriously, how many do they need to have in one neighborhood? Right, that is crazy. And then you mm -hmm. you know, and then oh. 10 miles away, nothing. That's yeah. right. That is, <laughs> that is amazing. But they do so much research and they said they do research based on not where you have now, but what you're going to have in the future. And that's something. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's true. What, they do it based on where you're going. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's, because when and that's it, all we need. To, yeah, we need to look at our life too. In the area that I live, it was gang related. The first mm. store they opened was a home, um, a Home Depot. Mm. The next thing they knew was a Target, and mm. and now this whole area where I currently live is, yeah. you know, it's gentrified. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, and there was a store in this. You got to check that out on YouTube. A CNBC story. They let a little sister do it, and then talk about the um, story behind um, the food deserts, and it just came out recently, and. She, there was a neighborhood, um, I think Baltimore, and they wanted to bring a Trader Joe's and the Black Association um, wrote them and asked them not to come because they were going to cause that in gentrification in their neighborhood. Mm. And they decided not to come. Wow. Because they knew that when they, isn't that amazing that a retail will bring people like that? That's how committed the white people are to their health. Mm -hmm. They're like, I'm not going to live there unless you have somewhere healthy for me to eat. Mm -hmm. We got to get like that. You know what I mean? But it, they still might come though. You that's know, the way Afroeconomics is. I know. They still, they, they just might. Yeah, exactly. the blueprint is already downtown. So it's, they're going to come yeah. eventually. <laughs> yep. I know he better get ready. Exactly. And we, we, ha we have to, that's why our incomes always have to be improving. Mm -hmm. That's, that's right. why we need this type of discussion in our neighborhoods and they get closed out. And then 
a lot of times they'll close themselves out. But I know that many times I have approached the projects and said, I want to talk to your residents about entrepreneurship. I want to talk to them about taking their life to the next level, you know, and I can't get in. Mm. You know, so then I do these things. Anybody can watch this. Anybody, you know, but then sometimes you say, well, easy for her to say, you know, but anybody that's watching this now, you need to know I had absolutely zero money to start this business. All I did was work and it has fed me for the last 25 years. I had zero loan, zero SBA, zero grant. I'm not lying, zero partner. My partner was God. So don't tell me <laughs> that you have to get a loan to start right. a business. Right, right. They don't have to give you nothing. You ain't got to owe nobody nothing. 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 We don't have to, you know, but, but we don't have enough examples like me that get time. All we get are examples of people who, you know, got the loans and talking about the loan and how, you know, all you need is customers, customers, mm. customers. That's it. People you helping. That's how you start a business work. That's how we get through a recession work. You know, if it means that you have to start over, redirect, do something else, no problem. You got to do it. There's, you know, Michael brought me some, um, um, some masks today and they look like underwear. I was like, these look like underwear. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and he said, yeah, they're made by Hanes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hanes took, I was like, oh, we walk around with an underwear. You know, it looked like, you know what I mean? Like I cut up my drawers. <laughs> but that Haynes is doing it now. You know that's what I'm saying? Right. Haynes is like everybody is. That's another market. <laughs> Haynes is like that's another market. But that thing got the nice elastic right here. All mm -hmm. they did was like take it. But that is definitely a crotch right on my face. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is crazy. This thing look like that. I would stop and get it. Like the, but it was like he was like, yo, it's Haynes. <laughs> that right. But that's so smart. And it felt, look, it was soft. Like, you know, the, um, but that's the way we do it. That's the way we have to be. You know, when it was like, it's very expensive to keep um, renting spaces. So what yeah. did I do? I started going online, doing Zoom. Yeah. And then where's the world coming now? To Zoom. Zoom. But right. we were there first. But we were there <laughs> first. Trust your instincts and do what you got to do. Yeah. I was like, People don't invite me to go speak places. So I was feeling like left out. Like, you know, what about me? So what did I do? I said, well, I'm going to do my own. And I just started doing my own. Do your own. Do That's your own. Right. Because most of the time, when we're waiting for someone else to invite you somewhere or let you in or, you know, give you that opportunity, they do it on their terms. Yeah. When mm -hmm. you do it, you do it on God's terms. This is the way God showed you how to do it. This is how we're going to do it. I'm not going to do it. You know, if I had the answer to somebody else, they'd be telling me, oh, well, don't say that. Don't say this. Don't play that black music. Don't so-and-so, you know, no. Mm -hmm. Yes, it takes sacrifice, but it also gives you freedom. This last week, freedom ain't free. How you doing, Miss Rogers? How's Kenya? Y'all have any, look, I just want to thank my choir, my girls, Miss Hayes, Miss Howard, Miss <laughs> <laughs> Perkins. I wish people could see how pretty y'all are. They, they don't want to show me up, so I don't have no problem with that. Oh, and, That's right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I ain't got no problem with that, y'all. Y'all can hide in the back, but I just love that y'all talk. I not love at 9 o'clock at night. No, no, 9 o'clock. Oh, you that's just the beginning your husband's <laughs> look your husband's still out working so you know you I know you still got your makeup on because he he, he, he he comes in the house and you go hi baby yeah <laughs> <laughs> hi baby I was waiting for you <laughs> like, yeah he's probably listening to me right now he's like nope she'll be like snoring babe she's snoring when I get home <laughs> yep <laughs> that's beautiful that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Hi, Valerie. Hi, Wanda. 
Oh, Sadie. Oh, my Sh my Sharona. My sister Sharona is on. My Sharona. Y'all remember that song? <laughs> oh, Sharona. Oh. Y'all don't remember that? Do y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. I know I she don't. does. It was a white song. My Sharona. Dr. Williams, you know you remember it. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah. Yeah, that, I, do. That, that, that. I remember it. She was, look, but she she is older than the song, so they took it from my dad. <laughs> my dad <laughs> named her. <laughs> he went from Sharona to like all just normal names. How she get Sharona and then Jennifer? I mean, really? I don't know. <laughs> He could have given me something, right? Something. Give me a song. But it is what it is, and I'm happy to be here. Thank you, Sharon. I'm glad you hung out with us tonight. The whole Hayes family. I love y'all. <laughs> we love you, too. The bottom love line is, so just remember that your recession survival kit is having the information, having your emergency money, keeping your liquidity, keeping your debts down. This is not time to respond to any of the commercials. Mm -hmm. This is your time to cut back and seriously take it easy. Take it easy. Live below your means. Many mm -hmm. will say live within your means. No, let's live below our means. Live below your means. That's the way you can save. That's the way we can save the most. And then let's focus on the long term. Let's look down. This too shall pass. Think about the worst thing that happened when you were a kid and think about how now it's a distant memory and you now believe that that was the good old days. Well, soon, these are the good old days. We're going to be talking about this and how we made it through. We made it through, seriously. You no. Know? Identify, you make sure that your portfolio is correct for your risk tolerance. Don't let us get to another market tank, you know, and go dip down into that V and you're even uh, thinking about going crazy. Make sure you're positioned the way you want to be, not just for good times. You need to be thinking about how much risk am I exposed to? And if this market dips 10%, what does that mean to my portfolio? My risk tolerance quiz looks at stuff like that. So let's do that. And they, you know, I mean, hey, they're predicting, you know, that these are going to be hard times. Let's take them at their word and let's do the right thing. Thank you, Mr. Hunter. Thank you all so much. Have a good one. I'll see y'all.